Hello everyone, my name is Mireille Rahmi. I am a PhD student at La Rochelle University in France. The presentation you are about to see is an experimental study of the supply-only ventilation effectiveness. To start, SOV works by delivering fresh and filtered air into the building at a continuous flow rate. In general, the unit is mounted in the loft space, where the average solar gain throughout the heating season is about 3 degrees. So we're picking up free energy, but still a slight gain. When the air enters the home, it creates a slight positive pressure that theoretically helps guard against radon and backdrafting of open fluid combustion apparatus. In addition, SOV found to be efficient in reducing humidity and surface condensation, which is the first source of mold growth. Despite its positive points, SOV have some disadvantages like the condensation in the building envelope and the additional energy consumption for preheating the air. But scientific research and studies are still essential to prove these advantages and disadvantages. The system is more used in UK than other countries. In France, its use is still limited for many different reasons. One of them is that the existing SOV system a central insufflation through ceiling diffuser usually mounted in the whole of the home. And this strategy is not quite uniform to the standards where the airflow path should be from bedrooms and living room to the wet rooms like kitchen and bathrooms. So our global objective is to characterize a new strategy of SLV, which is multiple insufflation, where the fresh air is blown into the living room and bedrooms, and the stale air goes right through the doors to the surface room, then evacuated through wall vents. As a beginning, we decided to study the SLV in a single zone case in order to find the optimum configuration and the optimum flow rate for in situ application. So, this study is about evaluating the effectiveness of the SLV system as a function of air flow rate and diffuser position, as well as we'll compare the results with an extract only ventilation system positioned in the same conditions. The natural vent is always at the downer part of the wall, representing the gap under the doors. Among many metrics that have been developed for determining the efficiency of ventilation systems, we chose those defined by Sandra Beck et al. in 1983, the air change efficiency and the contaminant removal effectiveness. The measurements were carried out in a full-scale test cell in our laboratory. It's an environment room dedicated to indoor air quality and thermal comfort studies. It's protected from the whole pollution by a guard cell where we can control the outdoor conditions. As we can see in the figures on the right hand side, the cell contains 27 sampling points distributed on three levels, plus one in the air inlet and one in the air outlet. Also, it contains two occupants simulated by two black cylinders with CO2 being supplied through a perforated golf ball at a height of 1.1 meter. The measured parameters are CO2 concentration, air velocity, air temperature and surface temperature. Here are the different studied configurations. So, as we can see, there are two ventilation strategies, SLV and EOV and each one of them disposes of three different positions for the mechanical device. Note that we use the same type and form of the diffuser and the extractor. As I mentioned before, the objective is to evaluate two different ventilation effectiveness indexes. To do so, we use the most common gas tracer technique, the step-down method to measure the ability to exchange air in the room, in, in the room in other words, the air change efficiency. While for the contaminant removal effectiveness, we use the constant emission method. These are the results for air change. The figure in top right side shows the influence of the air change rate on the capacity of both ventilation systems, SLV and DOV, to replace the existing air in the room by new fresh air. And it corresponds to the configuration A 
where the mechanical supply or the exhaust device is situated at the upper part of the opposite wall. So, as we can see, the two systems present the same efficiency, around 50%, which correspond to the usual value of perfect mixing ventilation. The second figure represents the air change efficiency of the three configurations by imposing one air change per hour. The configuration A and B are typical of perfect mixing ventilation, while for the configuration C, we notice a short circuiting of airflow in case of extraction where epsilon A is about 30% and we notice an unidirectional flow occurs in case of supply system where epsilon A is nearby 62%. In the top left, the contaminant removal effectiveness is plotted against the air change rate for both systems. For the EOV system, Epsilon C is around 0.8 for all studied flow rate, except for 0.5 air change per hour, where it's equal to 1. This is also the same for the SOV. Epsilon C of 1 indicates that the mixing is complete and is continuous, and that the pollutant source position does not have an influence. In contrast, for the other air flow rate, Epsilon C of SOV increases till a maximum value for one air change per hour, then decreases by increasing the air change rate. It's believed that by increasing the velocity of the air flow, it's short-circuited and the pollutant source is in the recirculation area, which is completely separated from the bypass area. This different behavior of the two systems can be referred to different reasons, like the position, form, and type of the air terminal devices. Now in the down right side of the screen we see the contaminant removal effectiveness for the three studied configurations. The results show that the highest effectiveness is obtained in configuration A for SLV and in configuration C with EOV. In fact for SLV in configuration C the ceiling supply is radial and it's directly above the occupants. Thus, the new air cannot reach the pollutant source rapidly. As a conclusion, we can say that by evaluating the air change efficiency and contaminant removal effectiveness of supply-only ventilation and extract-only ventilation systems, the results show that one air change per hour can be a suitable air change rate for standard shell ventilation. In addition, the combination of SOV and configuration C seems to be the most efficient case in terms of replacing the air in the room, while the combination of SOV and configuration A is more adequate for removing contaminant released by occupants. The reason why the two indicators did not give the same tendency is that the behavior of air and pollutant are different, especially when the pollutant is not uniform distributed. The next step in our work is to evaluate the performance of the two ventilation systems mentioned in the study in terms of indoor air quality, energy consumption, and thermal comfort, or the measurement will be carried out in real condition. I mean by real conditions, a real two-story house, normal outdoor conditions, real occupancy, and so on. We are gone if the home architecture enables us, of course, to install the diffuser same way of configuration C, in the ceiling of the bedrooms and setting rooms. Plus, we are gonna test two different airflow rates. The first is one air change per hour, and the second is equivalent to the airflow rate recommended by French standards. Thank you.